Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Pastor George Pearsons is back, and we're talking about a subject that most people are interested in. It is called prosperity. That's right. God's That's will right. is prosperity. <laughs> and Pastor George will give you scriptures that don't leave you any doubt, but what? It's true. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I, I, somebody said, I've been rich and I've been poor. No, I've been poor and I've been rich. Rich, rich is, better. is better. It's better to have mm -hmm. than it is. to have not. It I'm is. I'm telling you. And you can have it, and I don't care where you start. We have, we have gone into African nations, mm -hmm. and they they know how to build buildings debt free. That's right. Big. That's 50, right. Fifty thousand cedars right. debt free. <laughs> that's right. Because of the word of God. Well, that's what this this particular broadcast, and this is the what, last one in our series of God's will is prosperity. And what we have done, Gloria, is every day over the last two weeks, we've taken a chapter from your book, God's Will is Prosperity, and we've gone through those chapters. And today, and all of those notes are available on kcm.org. Just click Good. to the picture of Gloria and me and all of those notes. You can Dude, download they have, them. They have to take our picture, though, to get the They've notes. Got, yeah, got to take our so, picture to get okay. the notes. It's got to go right. through our picture to get those notes. <laughs> but the, as I was praying about this last day, the Lord impressed me that there is a tremendous testimony that has come out of this book that you wrote 40 years ago. And there was a man, you just talked about this, yeah. a man in Africa, a pastor, David Oyedepo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And he, in, it was in March of 1982. And he March. wanted to know the, the secrets of kingdom prosperity. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He was going to go fast and pray. Yeah. And he took three books with him. He took his Bible, he took Brother Copeland's Laws of Prosperity, and he took Gloria Copeland's God's Will of Prosperity. It was probably a book like this, this cover, the original cover, and he took that with him for three days, and he fasted and prayed, and the Lord gave him, to him, the secrets that he was looking for of kingdom prosperity. Praise God. And they, it's stirring to see what they've done over there. It is, and that's why I wanted to show, first of all, we'll come back in a moment and we'll okay. teach what he taught about secrets of kingdom prosperity, but I wanted to show the people first, David Ayedobo's church. You've been there. I've yeah. not been there yet. Yeah. But you and Kenneth have been there, and it's pretty outstanding, isn't it? It is. Now, I, t I forgot one thing to tell you about yes. this when I was talking about the size of it. Right. There is the, the, big, the church seats 50,000 people. But when you go over there on Sunday morning, they can't all get in. <sighs> and they have Ooh. acreage in front of the oh. church, George, oh, my. that they put up screens and speakers, and the overflow my, my, is my. in that acreage. Well, I want to show them. It's awesome. I want to show them the feature. I mean, they built you a house over there. Yes, they did. Gloria Copeland has her own home over there. And it all came out of that fasting and prayer time that he had. Praise reading God. Reading your book. I think I'm going to go home after this today and read your book again. <laughs> but I think I'm going to read it again. <laughs> so let's take a look at this feature, and then Gloria and I will be right back, and we'll pick up on the, king, the, the secrets of kingdom prosperity. Praise God. Bishop David Oyedipo and his wife Faith are the founders of Living Faith Church Worldwide, also known as Winner's Chapel in Ogun State, Nigeria. In the spring of 2017, Brother Copeland traveled there once again to minister and to celebrate the 36th anniversary of the vision that God gave Bishop Oyedipo in May of 1981. After being miraculously healed of tuberculosis at a young age, David committed his life to the passionate study of God's Word. It was during these early years of spiritual growth that he first discovered the teachings of T.L. Osborne, Kenneth Hagin, and eventually Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. For the first time I saw uh, kingdom prosperity in its raw form. Now, 1982, I went out with his book, The Law of Prosperity, and Gloria's book, God's Will is Prosperity, and my Bible, asking the Lord, show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. I went to a fast, three-day fast, searching, praying, reading. On the third day, the heavens opened, and that opened up my destiny to a new realm. What did God say? My son David, my prosperity plan is not a promise. So it does not answer to prayers. It's not a promise, it has no respect for fasting. 
my prosperity plan is a covenant until your part is played, I'm not committed. Very clear. That gave me a very robust insight of what the covenant is all about. In May of 1998, over 500 acres were purchased in the jungles of Nigeria and construction began on a massive 50,000 seat tabernacle. The first phase of construction was built at a cost of $250 million and it was completed in one year, debt free, without the need of any American funds. It has since been listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest church auditorium in the world. By the time that Kenneth and Gloria visited the church in 2008, it had grown to over 2,000 acres with even more on the horizon. Today, the entire Canaan Land Campus sits on nearly 17,000 acres and employs a staff of 16,000 people. It includes several on-site banks, a gas station, the Hebron water bottling plant, and more. The Canaan Land Bakery bakes 3,000 loaves of bread every day. It is then distributed throughout the campus and in the neighboring community. It may seem hard to imagine worshiping with 54,000 people, but this church does that five times every Sunday. With thousands more in the outside overflow, the average weekly attendance at Faith Tabernacle routinely touches anywhere from 350,000 to 400,000 people. And with thousands of new converts coming into the kingdom every week, that number continues to climb. Within a six month span of 2015, 138,000 new members were added to the church. In December of 2016, construction was completed on the latest building at Canaan Land, the new Dominion Publishing House print facility. This state-of-the-art print shop is where all of Bishop Oyedipo's books, study Bibles, and other materials are created. While there, Brother Copeland had the honor of praying a prayer of dedication over the facility and the workers that run the large printing press. In 2015, the church unveiled plans for the new state-of-the-art Faith Theater, which includes indoor seating for up to 100,000 people per service. This massive addition to the Canaan Land Campus will include a new international headquarters for the ministry, children's facilities for up to 10,000 kids per service, a new multi-story Dominion bookstore, outdoor prayer booths, and a baptistry. Plans also include an audio-video theater, a food court, and a full shopping mall. The Word of Faith Bible Institute will be on site with facilities for up to 3,000 students. From very modest beginnings to the founding of the largest church in the world, Bishop David Oyedipo and his wife Faith are living proof that the Word works anywhere it's put to work in faith. Gloria and I are just sitting here just in amazement of what we just saw at David Ayerupo's church. Gloria, what a vision. George, what a vision amazing, the he has. And of course, as you said, you've been there. You've seen the place. Uh, she's, try, he's, she's wanting me to get there, so I'm going to go there too. But It's inspiring. It is. It, it must be inspiring. And the thing about it is, Gloria, that it was... the. You look at that and the seed of that, the beginnings of that came from your book. Praise God. Wow. He took your book and Kenneth's book on the laws of prosperity and read those along with his Bible because he wanted to know the secret of kingdom prosperity. And he went on that three-day fast and the Lord showed him, the Lord outlined it to him. And from there, from 1982, the, the church just began to grow and grow and grow from one level, rapidly, Praise rapidly. I, I would think that every pastor needs to read this book. <laughs> I, I told George that I felt like uh, Ned and the first reader when I got over there and saw all that, you know. It Talk really, about the, knowing the prosperity message. Oh, in yes, Africa. in Africa. In Africa. Yes. So it really should be a challenge to every individual, uh, every it's pastor. It's inspiring. It's just, it's just inspiring. Every pastor there. needs to go on a three-day fast and find out what the secret to their kingdom prosperity is. And then they're building that new building that sits 100,000 people. Oh, my goodness. I wish they could I, just send us that little one. That says, <laughs> yeah, send the little one. But I want, I want to know what that man knows. I mean, I want to... He just believes what he reads in the Bible. He does. And he believed what he read in this book. I think I'll go home and read it now. I'm but, sure. <laughs> and, and so what I did, Gloria, I just put together some things here. You know, a, a really, the, the secret of kingdom prosperity that he learned, it would, it would take 
a few days for us to teach the whole thing. Yeah. But I would like to go ahead and just really summarize what he found out about this. And we have our notes here. Okay. All of these notes are available to you, kcm.org. Uh, just go to it, click onto the picture of glory and me, and it'll take you to the notes that we have. And uh, so where kingdom prosperity is concerned, he went on this fast, the three-day fast. He took the Bible, the laws of prosperity, and God's will is prosperity. And he said on the third day, the Lord gave him Deuteronomy 8.18. And Deuteronomy 8.18 says, But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He yeah. that gives yeah. you yeah. power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Praise so God. first of all, glory, the Lord gave him Deuteronomy 8.18. Mm -hmm. And that, that in itself is such a powerful, powerful prosperity scripture. It is, it is so significant. And then the Lord spoke... Now you give that scripture mm. to a man with vision like Brother Oyedipo. Yes. Bishop Oyerpo, yes, and he'll do something with it. He'll take it and run with he it. He did it. Yep. And then <clears throat> God spoke the following words that changed his life forever. He said, my son, pro my prosperity is not a promise. My prosperity plan. Plan is not a promise, so it does not answer to prayers. It is not a promise, so it has no... Re it has no respect for fasting. <laughs> My prosperity plan is a covenant. Oh, isn't that good? It's a covenant. Yeah, it is. It's a covenant that we have with God. Praise Until God. Until your part is played, I am not committed. <sighs> Until now your that's part plain is enough. played, I'm not committed. Wow. And then he said this, no one can empower himself for financial dominion. It is only God that can do so. Until he empowers us, we are utterly powerless. Mm -hmm. We must therefore recognize that we can only commit to God on his own terms, not ours. <laughs> that is, there is always a part we must play before we can commit, to God, commit God to his yeah, part. That's right. Therefore, it is the revelation of the terms of a covenant that launches and positions us into the realms of inexplicable inexplicable but undeniable wealth. Praise God. Now, Gloria, that's what he received when he was out there. Ooh, the glory is like filling this room right now. Praise God. When I just read that. And to think about it, he read this book, and this is nice. what came forth out of what he learned from the Lord about kingdom, the secret to kingdom prosperity. We have a part to play. Yeah. And our part to play in it is to take it. Now, the thing you got to remember, George, since you haven't been there is, mm -hmm. we're not talking about a place like New York City. Right. We're talking about the jungle. They made a place in the jungle. There, there weren't any, they had to, they have to build their own hotel or whatever they have. Wow. There's nothing there like that. I mean, the house, people live there now in houses, but it's just, uh, it's, it's worth your trip over there. Yeah. He believed God, didn't he? Yeah. He believed the Word. You could take a tour of preachers over there. Oh, that's a good idea. It'd be worth their trip. That's a good idea. Oh, my. So awesome. Well, I want, I want to go see that because I, I want to see what it is that he has done. And then I, my other homework assignment is to go back and read your book again. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your second page, Gloria. And... Um, the, there are some notes that we're including with this because of the time on this broadcast today. We're including them in the notes about covenant. There's some teaching that he does about covenant. But I, I wanted to make sure that we gave this part, and that is, he said there are three covenant requirements for walking in financial dominion. The first one is tithing. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is the covenant foundation, responsibility and obligation for financial fortune. Now, he uses words, Gloria, that we don't normally use, like financial dominion. Or and, fortune. Or fortune. And, and that's why I so enjoyed studying this yeah. out, because I want to know what he knows. Well, he's not ashamed of prosperity. No, he's not. You know. <laughs> no, he's not. And over here, if you're not careful, the people preach and you make, try to make you ashamed of yeah. prosperity. Or he's whatever. not ashamed in he the least not bit. not ashamed. Not at all. All financial testimonies in the body of Christ are rooted in consistent tithing. Yes. Gloria, Amen. I've never heard that before. The truth is... Read that again. Okay. 
all financial testimonies in the body of Christ are rooted in consistent tithing. I believe that. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. And the that. truth is, any believer who is not a tither will remain a financial struggler. Praise God. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then he said, this is because it's it is impossible to be in command of financial fortune without being a tither. That's right. So the, one of the covenant requirements that we have is tithing. The second one he said, and are you, what have you got there? Oh, look at the next page. The next page and look at number two. Um, the next one is kingdom promotion giving. Now I've never heard that terminology before. Mm -mm. Kingdom promotion giving. Our seed is not a financial donation to help God, the church, the ministry, or the minister. Rather, it is a spiritual transaction uh -huh. that provokes the release of financial fortune in the ultimate among others. Boy, that's good, isn't it? Mm -mm. Oh my, I've got chills just reading this here right now. <clears throat> so that's what our seed is. It's not a donation, it is a spiritual transaction. I like that a lot. And it provokes the release of financial fortune. I've got financial fortune in my life. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then he says, number three, worship offerings. We are admonished in scriptures not to go into God's presence empty worship handed. Worship offerings. Worship offerings. You don't go into God's presence empty handed. This is because God takes cognizance of every offering we bring when we were in worship. We are in worship. Mm -hmm. So the worship offerings, we come and we, we, don't, we don't just... You don't plunk pass, it in the butt. Yeah, we plunk don't it. pass and plunk. <laughs> but it is a worship to God. Yeah. And That's good. That is good, George. God, God is aware of every offering we bring when we bring it in worship. Oh, God. wow. That wow. needs to be uh, <clears throat> emphasized. Yes, worship. it does. It does. Then he said, the covenant has never failed and it will not fail in our lives. That's right. As we play our part by engaging the covenant so as to commit God's integrity to perform in our lives, every financial stress will be terminated in Jesus' name. Praise God. See, that's why you have to get the outlines to this because you just have to go back and read it and read it again oh, and I, again. Let me tell you this about their <clears throat> overflow. Yes. There's property out in front of the church that has trees and stuff in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They got 50, this overflow, 50,000 white overflow. plastic chairs out there for the overflow. And I think they had a big, big screens too, but... 50,000 wow. white chairs. You know the ones I'm talking about. Gloria, that to me is Ephesians 3.20. It's worth the trip it's, to go. It's the exceeding abundantly far beyond far all beyond. that we dare ask or think according to the power of God. But there's a man, again, that took your book. And he has... This is what has happened as a result of it. Now, in, in the remaining moments, we've got how much? Five minutes left. On your page there, Gloria, at the bottom, it says prophetic blessing. Yeah. And David Ayedipo, these are, these are statements that he made. And I love, Gloria, I'm a collector of fine definitions. You'll like and this. I'm and I'm a collector of fine quotes and listen to okay, these. Okay, give if it these to just us. Don't, If these just don't fill up your, your spirit, in this global economic hard time, you and your household will never know how it feels. Glory to God. You'll never know how it feels. And then this one here. Every, number two. Number two. Every curse responsible for your financial, fi, for your financial challenges. challenges ends today. Oh. Every curse responsible for your financial challenges ends today. That's right. I'll say it again. Every curse responsible for your financial challenges ends today. Gloria oh, and I come into agreement yes, right now do. that Thank the you, fi financial challenges end today. Today's the day that it ends. As you walk out your covenant, the covenant of provision that we have with Almighty God. Amen. Whew. Okay, number three. I decree you will have an encounter that will turn you into a mighty nation. 
That's the declaration. Praise God. That's the declaration. P number four, poverty will not be identified with your lineage again. In Jesus' name. Isn't that good? It is. Poverty. You know, there's and some people... And now they're talking about the prosperity of that church all over the world. All over the world they're because talking they about it. Because they see it. It see made it. it into the Guinness Book of World Records. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he said poverty will not be identified. You know, I don't know what his background was. I don't know what where he came out of. But I suspect growing up in, in Africa the way he did, he probably did... He probably did not have an image to look at like no. he's living in right now. I would think not. I would think that I he probably came out of a very when you fly serious, over Africa and they yeah. travel in helicopter because uh, to get from one place to the other, it's right. just no streets right. and stuff. You see, uh, you see, I guess hundreds, but probably thousands of little shacks, and that's where the mm. people live that mm -hmm. go to his church for the most part. And they, now they've prospered. Yes, they've prospered. Glory. And, and there's a new, I think I've heard Brother Copeland talk about the new middle class. That yes, been, that's right. They that didn't, has been. That's what they say. Because of this church. They didn't have a middle class. They didn't have a middle class. And he truly, he truly affected a nation. He yeah, affected he he a did. nation. He changed it. So poverty will not be identified with your lineage again in Jesus' name. You know, it doesn't matter, Gloria, what background we have. No. It doesn't matter where we came from or the poverty that we might have come out of. That's over. That's done. That's right. Number five, from today, whatever has been sitting on your financial destiny is unseated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? What yeah. a statement. Yeah. You got to put that on your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. um, number, where am I? Number uh, six. The great projects of your life will be executed without financial stress in Jesus' name. Yes. I take it. I'll, I'll amen. I take it. The great projects of your life will be Praise executed God. without financial stress in Jesus' Praise name. Number God. seven, every curse responsible for your marital challenges comes to an end today. Praise God. That's prosperity. That's prosperity. That's right. Number eight, you shall be going up. You know, George, let me say this about number seven. Yes. Every curse responsible for your marital challenges mm -hmm. comes to an end today. Mm -hmm. uh, you, faith doesn't work. You can't have faith and have strife. Oh, that's true. You, you that's can't, true. It won't yeah. work. It, it won't, won't work. work. No. You got to walk in love, do what the Bible says, and, and be free. Yes. So there's another thing that yep. is just <clears throat> priceless. It is priceless. Oh, it's priceless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is priceless. Number eight, you are you shall be going up, going forward, and scaling new heights in the name yes, of Jesus. Amen. Oh, Father, we receive that. We're yes, going we up. Take it. We're going Thank forward, you, and Bishop. we're scaling new heights in the name of Jesus. Number nine, that broken home is restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. And number ten, you are changing levels supernaturally. supernaturally. And it's it, the it's signed Bishop David, David Oyedipo. Hallelujah. The man, the man I who think read you Gloria's take a tour over there, George. The man who read Gloria's book and now has the largest church in the world. Isn't that awesome? And he claims it's because he read his Bible, he read the laws of prosperity, and he read God's will is prosperity. Praise God. Praise and he God. has discovered the secret. He just believed it. And he acted did. on it. He acted, believed That's it. That's all we got to do. So after this, I'm going to go home and read your book. Gloria, okay, George, go, go sit in your chair and read the book. <laughs> okay, we'll yeah. be back. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.